Hello, hello, welcome back. And I'm back with Mr. Cynic on my left and Mr. Meds looking wonderful on my right. We have our next game that we'll be watching, Dirty, Lobber, and the Boys versus Rogue. As per Lance, these are sister organizations since they've kind of switched around players. They've, you know, they're very familiar with each other. But Mr. Meds, what can you tell us? Can you tell us more about these two teams? Yeah, like you like you're saying, they're they're very friendly teams. Uh, you know, they scrim together a lot. Uh, they know each other's weaknesses. They know each other's strengths. So I think this is going to be actually a really good and interesting game. Uh, I think it's actually going to be kind of a slugfest. Um, you know, people trying to uh, style on the others, uh, maybe get some ego plays in here. We'll see. Um, you know, try to show up our show up your friends. So I, I think this is going to be a really really good game. Yeah, this is going to be a match to see for sure. This is our second or uh, to last game that we'll be seeing for today. We still have one more game to to watch after this. But with that being said, let's go ahead to our draft. Um, Cynic, so, you know, since these two teams are very familiar with each other, do you think there will be uh, target bans going on? Or will we just see the general bans like Kalari and Rampage? Um, I think it depends on how well they've been hiding other things, like if they've been screaming other teams with different strats or anything like that. I think they'll just ban what they think will be good for target bans, as you said. Um, but, I, I mean, last game we had four different things that we've never seen in the other games, so maybe we'll see something different this game. Maybe we'll see an Arbash played. I don't know. We'll find out. And we'll see what these teams can bring to the table and keep us entertained as well as the last game. And the Chimera is the first ban, so first team to ban it straight up, don't want to play against it, don't want it. Uh, interesting to see what they uh, react with it with from uh, Dirty Lake. Yeah, sm smart ban, I think, here. I, I think that just W key of the Chimera has just been way too, way too oppressive. Uh, we do see the Belka come in, uh, another really oppressive pick that we've seen throughout the day. Uh, the CC is just too strong um, and provides some really, really, really good follow-up. Um, I'm interested to see what the, the first pick is here. I think it's gonna be maybe like a Decker. Uh, I think that that's a really high priority pick and we, we do see the Decker come in. Um, so that's actually just like a really strong pickup for Dirty Lake and the boys. Um, I think that Tekken will probably handle this one and it, you know, he's shown that he's a master of it, so. Oh, actually, we do have a technical difficulty there, and uh, it looks like Decker actually went over to Rogue. So, uh, really strong pickup. Uh, you know, either way, I think you know it's. I think it's still a really good pickup. Yeah, as you as you said, like very strong in the lane. Good, good, aggressive potential. Good defensive potential, and obviously the Belica just remove it. It's a flex pick. We don't know where it could go. They just don't want to deal with it. Um, and obviously, Decker can be flexed into the mid lane if they really want to, but obviously. Uh, we haven't seen that today, but again, we don't know what these teams will bring. Maybe we will see something different that will happen. Um, interesting to see what Dirty Lake take, which will be Steel as a flex pick. Richter pro could uh, also a flex, could be played in the jungle as as we saw in the previous game. It was played off lane, so um, we'll see what Rogue respond with this. I, I expect them probably taking the Severog here and then maybe taking uh, their AD and then Dirty Lake finishing up with their AD and then they're going to the next bands, but we'll see what happens. Obviously Steel, again, the flex could be played support, could be played jungle, but we don't think it will happen. Um, and as we can see, Gadget and Crunch um, take it away mids. Yeah, so I, I, I actually want to really harp on this Steel pickup. I think there's some mind games going on because we've seen time and time again that Pinzo has taken that Steel into the offlane. It is a huge comfort pick for him. So I think by Dirty Lake and the boys, picking up that steal it's actually a huge huge target pick against pinzo yeah so, and gadget crunch yeah ga gadget crunch uh, i think it's just like uh, kind of staples i think crunch is just a really good engaged champion uh, and whoa we're seeing a fey come in uh i don't fey into gadget is not really one we've seen a lot uh you know gadget always has that push unless the fey's maxing the RMB, um, which I'm, I'm hoping he does because he, he, he won't be able to match, match the push. Yeah, the Fae, I'm, I'm looking at Dirty Lake's comp and I'm just saying team fight. I want a team fight. I want a skirmish, be the 5v5, and obviously Rogue again, Gadget 5v5, but Crunch doesn't really want to 5v5 as well as the others, like Steel, Richter. 
Decker obviously likes the 5v5 or just the fact that a cage and obviously a stun and obviously the ultimate as well. So I'm honestly, right now, I think they just banned several. Yep, there's a, there's a several ban. And then I think Rogue will probably ban something they don't want to play against. Strongo, again, to shut down the, the crunch. Uh, Dirty Lake and the boys, honestly, honestly, Murdoch could be picked here, to be honest. Sparrow even, like, they could pick Sparrow and then they could take FaZe, Muriel still up. Like, that would be an insane team fight. But the problem is they would be... Uh, lacking a lot of like power in that lane, They'll, that'll obviously be something that Rogue look to maybe focus with, like because Kalari is still up, but the Twin Blast is what they take. Yeah, I, I think that Dirty Lake and the boys really want to play front to back here. Uh, you know, they've got the two big beefy boys uh, in the front here uh, with Faye in the back, and then the Twin Blast is just going to clear wave uh, and then look to roam with the team uh, to, tw to team fight. So I think this is a a good pickup for Dirty Lake and the boys. We haven't seen a lot of Twin Blast. It hasn't been really been a priority pick. Uh, like you said, I think Rogue might answer maybe with another safe pick, like a Murdoch or something else. Um, but we do see Revenant, who's actually a really good pickup in a Twin Blast. Uh, that's kind of the counter pick right now. Um, Revenant does a lot of damage, as a lot of you know from your solo queue games. So uh, the Twin Blast is good. And then we also have a lot of damage coming in from the Kalari. Uh, you know, kind of like I said in the last game, Kalari does a lot of damage with the new items. So uh, we're going to see a lot of pop. And to round it off, we take Grace. Wait, Steel, Steel or Richter support? And then Greystone Jungle, I would assume, because it's fast to clear. The Richter offlane Steel support would be my guess. Honestly, I'm not too sure how this Kalari plays the game if this gets into the mid to late game and he's not ahead. Um, yeah. I think Dirty Lake and the boys' comp is just group up, run into them, and what do they do? Like, they have nothing to stop them. They have no CC apart from Decker and obviously the gadget. Uh, but I, I don't really see how Rogue win this unless they snowball early. Yeah, I think Blue Jay is going to have to get really creative with his pathing um, because if Dirty Lake and the boys are throwing down wards, like you're saying, there's no way for this Kalari to get in. Um, you know, that Fey Twin Blast, while they are squishy and while they, they can get popped, uh, it's and it could be quite scary. Um, if there's wards, you can see it coming, so. Yeah, these, uh, looking at the dirty D-Lab just draft right now, you know, we're seeing two of my favorite front lines. We have Steel and Richter. And to see the two of them in this match is just one of the best things ever because who doesn't love those beefy front lines? They have more beef than a Big Mac burger. But I have to ask, um, you know, Senek, who wins the draft for you? Uh Dirty Lake is not a question. I, I'd rather be on Dirty Lake. Their composition is just more safer, has more win conditions. Rogue, don't get ahead early, then I don't see how they win the game, to be honest. And what about you, Mr. Meds? Who wins the draft for you? Yeah, I, I think D Lab wins this one. Um, just looking at the draft, I, I think there is a world where Rogue, you know, group up with the Kalari, invade the jungle, get the Richter really far behind, uh, you know, get the Kalari really far ahead. Um, but once the late game comes and all those resistances come in and the, the wards get placed, I, I, I really think that, you know, Dirty Lake and the boys are going to win this one. Yeah, I really like the Kalari pick because he's just like a, this cheeky hero. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how Rogue will will play him in this match. But Cynic, in your opinion, in your expert opinion, what works out for Rogue in that um, draft? Um somehow get the Kalari ahead, snowball it into other lanes, and then hope that the game doesn't last long enough for those tanks to come online. And um, the CC, obviously, to, to deal with the Kalari who would be fed. I, I think that's the only way they really win in this situation. Uh, just get the Kalari ahead, allow the Kalari, create space for the Kalari, get the, lane, the lanes pushed up to allow that space to invade and put the enemy jungler behind. That, that's, that's the only way I really see this in terms of just pure compositional regardless of player skill just pure comps that's the way i see this playing out yeah i'm really looking forward to to this next match um so now we have lance cecil uh as well as spooky mars looking very spiffy high class and very well dressed thank you so much our dog it is me lance cecil here with spooky again how you doing spooky Oh, uh, Lance, I'm always doing great. I see we're uh, matching styles a little bit here today, which is always a very nice thing to see here. I'm excited. 
for this yeah, game. I, I mean, these drafts are looking crazy right now. I'm excited to see if Rogue can win this race. I feel like uh, Cynic kind of harped on it early in this uh, analyst that he was doing, but they got to get that Kalari ahead. It's going to be so hard to shred through all of that front line that is on D Lab. If they can't get her ahead, she's going to be pretty worthless late game. So definitely going to have to play around that. I'm also really interested to see where these matchups go. You see that crunch picked up. The Richters are really tough lane to play crunch into with that silence just naturally on his queue there so probably looking to disrupt either pinzo or tekken whoever they put over in that uh off lane probably going to be pinzo as that's what they've been sticking to and pretty true to so it's going to be interesting to see you know who's going to be able to get ahead early but if d lab starts with a little bit of pressure in here and gets ahead on them they're going to run away with this game just a little bit of a correction really quick at the top of our screen we are seeing that it says four from gaming and pink ravens that is incorrect this is d lab versus rogue we are going to have rogue over here on the left side where you see ffg and pink ravens is actually dirty lake and the boys so we do see that it is pinzo on the crunch going to be over in the off lane it looks like he's going to be playing into the graystone though as we have a support richter we see him hovering over on the side of the map where the gold buff is and that's just a, it's probably just a better matchup for him on that crunch too. Not having to worry about that silence coming through. But yes, very fortunate for Pinzo not to play into that. Though? So, I mean, I think that crunch is pretty good into gray zone. I don't spend a whole lot of time over on the island that is off lane because I just am not into torturing myself. That lane is pretty bad in my, for, for me to play because you get a you get a little behind and you end up a lot behind in, and I'm the type of player that gets behind every once in a while. So every once it, in a while, every once in a while. It'll, so it'll be <laughs> interesting to see how that goes, but I do think the crunch has got the advantage there. I'm a little surprised we've seen Greystone the amount of times we have today. Um, however, he's made a couple appearances and the, you know, you can't understate how that ult is a little curious to see that it is Grady that is picking up the steel in the jungle. Clear is a little slow until he gets that fire blossom, but still able to make a huge impact. There's a big kind of like meme joke around the community that full build on steel is really just hitting level six. Items don't really matter. It's nice <laughs> to get tanky later, but all you're looking for is that big shield bash ults to really like stir things up and get it around. Oh, we actually see that Toasty's in a bit of trouble here as Tekken Kid is able to get a good stun out onto him. He's going to have to flash away. So that's down early. Lakinator in a bit of a pressure as well, really so uh, choking him off some of this experience here. Uh, they got to be careful for the dual lane over here on the side of D Lab. And yeah, D Lab already looking pretty low. And if I'm rogue, that should be a signal for Kalari to start coming over, right? You see these half health dual lanes. Lake right. Nair is on a squishy character. Yeah, he's got a dash. It's not a very far dash. You can easily catch up to that. But you have to look at where Kalari is on the map. Currently still on the right side, <sighs> working on packing through mid. They're not gonna be able to get anywhere just yet. Oh my goodness! Hook goes wide. Can they find the first blood? Haru looking for a shot. Needs one more blade. Oh, he flashes through, and he puts him down. First blood goes the way of Rogue. Put him on the board. Let's go. That's exactly what you want to see if you are a Rogue fan here. Right. Tekken Kid really taken over on this Decker role. If you played any of their like the ranked in-house sort of things, you remember the menace that Tekken oh, Kid was here. on this. Oh, Blue Jay's looking for one, puts another down, and this is now a 3v1. Grady has come to play, but you found yourself in a bad spot. Run, run back to that tower, stun comes through, and so does Grady. Blue Jay picks one up. A rogue is coming out strong. Oh, and this is a team that can hit their power spikes really early. It's kind of redonkulous how quickly Revenant starts doing insane amount of damage. He's, <laughs> he's been in at least... He's got 100% kill participation right now as they've all gone on over here in this duel lane. Duo. <laughs> this first back, he's going to hit Claymore probably, and it's going to feel so good for him. He's going to be huge exactly where you want the Kalari to be as well. Getting involved in these, they know that they blew that flash early from Toasty, so they're able to come over there, take advantage of it. Grady shows up at an opportune time as well, and they're able to capitalize it, and this is exactly what Rogue is looking for. Big shout out to our production yeah. uh, choice for putting Rogue and D-Lab up there, making it a little bit easier for me and Spooky. Yeah, did you see the patience from Blue Jay there too? He knew that Grady was there, but he didn't decide to try to stop Grady from going in. He was looking to take <sighs> advantage of it. Happy Picker taking very low. That's gonna be a force reset there. But but yeah. the awareness from Blue Jay so far in this match, only four minutes in, phenomenal. He, he's playing on point. 
right? Taking advantage of the fact he's on that early game champion. These players are smart. They recognize the same thing we're recognizing as viewers. They know that they got to get ahead and they got to try to snowball this. If this game goes 25, 30 minutes, it's going to be very difficult for them to win these like long team fights around the neutral objectives. They know they got to get cooking with it fast. And that's where they're at. Grad is going to come over here, look for a gank onto the dual lane, try to slow Haru down. But I think they're wise to it as they are backing up. Yeah, they're not going to go for any risky plays right now. Rogue understands what their game plan is, right? They need this early game to go well for them. So they have to be very careful about where they decide to step up to. If they just step up to a tower line and do risky positioning for nothing, there's just no gain to that. So they're playing it cautiously. Allow Blue Jay to clear his jungle, make the rotations. And then once Blue Jay is able to make these rotations and get into these lanes, that's when you'll see them start to get a little bit more active, I think. Right, and just a bit outside there for Toasty, but that is going to reward the gold buff over for Dirty Lake and the boys. Help them catch up just a little bit, but it's nothing compared to the 2-0 and 1 that we are seeing on Haru. Grady's still hovering over on this side. Haru's got to be careful, but it looks like he's about to step over a ward. Yeah, pathing just back up over to his two camp as well, trying to get a little bit more farm under his belt. Haven't gotten too good of a look into this mid lane, but it is something that I definitely wanted to talk about. Wangle is probably the only person that I will openly admit is just like a more or, or that loves gadget more than i do it, it's pretty hard to because i've got a large affection for that character but wangle is kind of sh kind of what i mimic my gadget gameplay on i'm in the belief actually that phase one of the worst matchups for her in the mid lane because of the fact she can match the wave clear doing the right mouse button max like they were talking about cynic i believe was saying that however i still think that abby picker is gonna be going the e max route just because it does more damage, and I know the style that Abby Picker plays with, he's going to be wanting to poke uh, the gadget out. Still has pretty good wave clear with uh, maxing the Q second as well for the the string. I don't know what they're called. The, the vines that trip you. I'm sorry. I'm failing as a caster. I don't know what they're <laughs> trip called. Vine. But Let's call yeah, it. <laughs> the trip vine. She's still got pretty good wave clear with that, and then just like her regular stuff. Kind of hard to keep up with the gadget, but we gotta okay. we gotta put a pause on this because we see some movement from Blue Jay as he's behind him. Yeah, he's in great position for Lakeinator. Stun comes to connect, but a big Riplash pulls Blue Jay right back. He's not going to stop him, though. That little birdie is just going to fly right back over to Lakeinator. Twin blasts, twin deaths. That may be a fang tooth now for Rogue. All praise be to Tekken Kid here. The the stuns are landing in perfect fashion. Every time you see anybody come into this lane, Tekken Kid hits him with a lacrosse ball, scores a goal. That's enough to net another kill. Going to push it into a neutral objective here as well. They're going to put the first Fang Tooth into their pockets. That's fantastic for them as he is sitting on a red buff too. So that's going to extend the duration of that. Hopefully, I think it's snap gas. I'm not actually sure about that. But I'm going <laughs> to pretend that it does for the sake of the cast. And we see, you know, the resets coming through once again as Haru is able to put even more money into his pocket. Not what you want to see from a revenant as it won't be long till he two three four shots you and then obliterates you and you're just done especially if he gets the scar from his e on you there's not a whole lot you can do we see wango back and up from grady there as they did take a little peek at each other but rogue is comfortably where they want to be and if we're d lab right now we're just trying to slow this down uh, i think d lab might have bitten off more than they could chew if they tried to go in there grady now show up in this duel and this is where all the action is but unfortunately yeah. not enough follow-up from his Toasty, duo lane here. There's Toasty, just, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Spooky. Oh, it's just, they're just too far behind right now. They don't have a lot of fight potential. And Rogue is just kind of in control of this duo lane. I think the more D-Lab tries to fight around this left side of the map, the worse they're going to be off. Look at Lobber over here. He's having a great time against Pindo, out trading. This is where Grady should be focusing their attention. This is the weaker side for Rogue. And that's where they want to play through. Yeah, it is very hard to gank that crunch, but it's, it gets a lot harder once he hits six, which it does look like he has already obtained that. So he's got those double dashes in order to be able to get out. So hard to get there, but I agree. I think you got to try to shift your focus towards Lobber right here. Might be worth it to try to shut Haru down a little bit later into the game, but right now that's going to be really t difficult, especially with how good Tekken Kid has been with these cages. No one's really even been able to get close to Haru. He still has his flash up as well. About to hit six yeah. right here. We see him sitting at 2-0 and 2. Just getting a huge, already 60, six, 69 CS for a second there. Then he went to 71 <laughs> as we tried to hit it with the nice as I looked down at almost the perfect time. But he went a little bit over, but that's okay, Haru. He's sitting already on a Vanquisher. Tier 1 hey. item already completed. That is so much damage. He's got the Execute if somebody gets below 6% HP as well. That is massive for Haru. He is going to be game-changing if a D Lab plays anywhere around him. They are in big trouble. What's that extra gold from the kills that he's getting, right? That's just 
how yep. Revenant that, works. He's, that's the passive on Revenant, yep. Yeah, he's just getting so much more gold than Lakinator is right now. And Twin Blast doesn't have the DPS to keep up with him. An eye, though. On this mid lane, Happy. Mike can looked at. Pinzo makes the rotation. Knockup is good. Blue Jays here. Forces the blink out from Happy Picker. Not <laughs> quite enough damage. Oh, man. You can hear them grinding their teeth <laughs> in frustration on that one. Yeah, Grady's here to defend it. He is going to lose at least one wave here in mid. Appy Picker will, but they're going to look to start Lobber. up this or Prime. Lobber's here to try to mess with them. But there's not really a whole lot they can do as they do have the hunt from Blue Jay. Take a as look ulti. as Grady's coming around. Good. Still get active here, Grady. Looking to put some pressure down, but unfortunately it's too little too late. Grady, looking to collapse down onto one target there. Pinzo forced to run away. And it, all in all, it's an orb prime for one death. It is Blue Jay who goes down. I don't know. Is, is that worth it when you're this far ahead as Rogue? And it, it, it's your snowballing assassin that goes down. Miss this. Who got it? Did did uh, Blue Jay steal that with Hunt before he died? Uh, Rogue does have it, yes. Rogue has it? Okay, then yes. it's worth it because it's 200 gold to everybody on your team for it for trading one kill. The math just adds up that the one kill on Kalari is not worth as much as 200 gold for everybody on your team. Worth for worth for Rogue for sure if they were the ones who stole it. And I don't see anybody glowing blue or purple. Blue Jay would have been the one doing it if he was the one who got it. But we might have a little bit of fight here as Labra just steals the fives. Uh-oh, unfortunate Greystone things as he clips into the top of that wall. Everybody's <laughs> felt that that's played that character. That indicator's not always as clear as it needs to be. And you know, sometimes we just like to hang out inside of walls for a little bit. I personally find it to be a great time. I've never been great at jumping over things, especially things as high as walls. So I feel that Greystone's pain all the time, but we got to take a <laughs> second to readjust this here. So we do have one kill that has come over to D-Lab. They got a little bit of gold for it as well because it was the Clary with the shutdown, but they did trade that. We've got two neutral objectives already over on the side of Team Rogue as they got the mini prime and they got the first Fang Tooth. So Rogue is still sitting good, but D-Lab's doing a good job of not really dying that much and holding stuff up. Oh, but back, DJ. Abby is in trouble here. Abby. Should be able to get out of here. Oh, the guillotine! Oh. No! Wow! Steals. Fly trap just pulls Blue Jay back. That's tragic. Oh, I but thought I mean, he wouldn't. You have to wait for. <laughs> I thought he just did that into the wall and it stopped him from pushing forward. I didn't know that the fly trap had came out. It actually doesn't look like the fly trap came out as the diamond is still up on oh. Appy Picker. I think he just kind of aimed a little bit too far to the left there, which feels really bad because that was definitely a death on the Appy Picker here. So maybe a little bit of nerves coming in on to Blue Jay here, or maybe a little bit of lag as well. I know that he's an NA Wester at heart. He lives in uh, beautiful California. Uh, this is <laughs> off lane. It just never stops brawling, does it? <laughs> what, what are they even fighting for over here? You, you found yourself a little trade. You get an oh, old here's, Appy. here's that roam. Looking for the rotation. Gets the blink out from Pinzo. He's going to be just fine. Pinzo yeah. doing a good job of being able to stay alive in this. Uh, apparently, it does look like Greystone does take it to to crunch a little bit early here. Having a little bit of a difficult time. <laughs> Lobber, is, Lobber is really good at this game. That's not an easy lane for anybody to play into. You just saw some of the interactions that you see from it. They can fight to a certain point, but then Greystone's got that second life for free with his R. He hits that stasis, goes into the thing. You're kind of forced to use the click to get away. Oh, oh what a cage from Tekken Kid, Lakinator. Pulls out the Gatling guns, but what can you even do there? Right now, Rogue, he's just team fighting so gonna... much better. Oh, oh what is... in some trouble. Takes him down to the Shadow Realm, looking for a way out. The root does create enough distance, and Haru keeps the shutdown alive. There is no bounty to be had for D-Lab. <laughs> I don't want anybody to ever accuse Haru of being a W key holder with the way that he just pushed D and sidestep that steel ult. That was pretty nuts. I thought for sure he was about to get knocked up and have to trade one for one within his ult, but really good job of surviving there uh, by Haru and able to get out. That's huge because that's not the type of shutdown that you want to take no. and give over to them. We see Blue Jay starting to build that bounty up for himself as well, sitting at five and one. Both of the CC is going to be dodged by the double jump there. Real nice acrobatics out of Blue Jay. Yeah, acrobatics check, rolling that 20, so we're all good <laughs> on that one. Blue Jay out of danger for now, but now we, ha we have to look at the state of the game here, right? Overall, it, it looks even on the map. You take a look at the kill board, 
and things are trending the way of rogue but that's not always something that translates directly to a gold lead right you still have to look at the objectives so far it's been rogue on top of them but we've seen responses from d lab going forward now do rogue need to change up their game plan at all with these tanks starting to come online more I do believe that aggression is the way to go as we see another gank actually coming out onto Appy, but Pinzo's are out from Appy, but Pinzo's going to be able to use that forward crunch in order to be get out of the fly trap. Oh but we got to be careful as Toasty's caught a little bit out of his position. Lakeinator's got to back up as well. No cage available by Decker, but Wangle's got Wangler. a good little bit of an angle on them. Wangle with the angle. Pushing back up is Rogue. Look for a kill. Finds the stun that should be all they need. And Lakeinator takes another spill nine to three yeah the scoreboard not now Pinzo, hello take it off fight under the tower lobber has to go up into oh. the old it is enough to keep him alive happy picker still alive as well yeah and that's probably Pinzo. going to be the P the tier two tower over in the right lane as well not looking great as that first one just fell second one's going to fall immediately afterwards they're going to trade it for second fang tooth here get a little bit of out of combat movement speed onto the side of rogue but that's a good chunk of uh, global gold going over to D Lab with that tier two tower trade. Gonna have to defend the inhibit here as well. And there's always that looming pressure of the fact that that can fall down if you don't pay attention to that lane at a moment's notice. And we were talking about how it, it looks like Rogue who wants to play fast and get ahead early and take these big objectives early. But we see them almost having an inhib down with D Lab being as far behind as they have been in this game and a really good macro play by them to realize their pushing potential. Yeah, at some point, you have to look at the game and say, what can we realistically achieve here? If you're not winning these fights over on the duo lane, you stop trying for them. And D-Lab does exactly that. They refocus their attention, rotate towards that right side, and get some global gold for themselves as well. That gives them pressure on the map, and it should make it easier for them to now respond to this next Fangtooth that will be spawning up. And Haru I, just hit a really good spot really quick. I just want to point out, he just hit level 9, so he's got max uh, points into his Obliterate right now. He's about to hit base as well, as Blue Jay is in a bit of trouble, but he is invisible. If we could just take a really quick peek when we get a chance at what Haru just bought. Yeah, so he's got the Terminus now on two <laughs> items before some people are like even remotely close to finishing. Toshi's only got one Tier 1 item right now. Lake's only got an item and two Tier 2s, like... Haru is very far ahead right now, yeah. and he's going to be so hard to kill with the lifesteal from that Terminus as well. Watch this Revenant because he's going to put on a show. And this is where the real lead is coming from for Rogue. This is their big powerhouse, and this is where you can see they're playing around. Grady is lurking around. Ooh, Tekken's first in mid as well. of the game, it feels. Might run into Blue Jay and the river path there, where it might be a collapse. You can see multiple members heading down. So far, no one's committing to anything just yet. Pinzo taking a oh, no. beating over here in this off lane. Does get himself out. He needs some help over there. He does need some help. He was almost done, so he tried to get him with the forward <laughs> crunch uh, in the in the passive thing to push him into the tower, but that may not have done him very well as Lobber's got his ult. He probably would have just ulted him under the tower and potentially killed him there when the dash was gone. So Lobber's going to come in here, try to steal some of that red side jungle as a consolation prize. He knows that all of the members of Rogue, except for Blue Jay, who had just backed, are still on the left side of the map. Very safe Daddy. to come do some counter jungling. Ready, coming in from behind, looking for Haru. He wants the shutdown. Cage comes through, stops him from aggressing. Can't find too much damage to the wall there, though. Here comes the rest of Rogue. Looking for a little bit more. Grady getting low. Grady taken down. Tesla yeah. Dome dropped for that one. But still, it's a lot of commitment for only one kill so far. It is, but it is the jungler who does it. No neutral objectives up on the side of the map that they are on, so not a whole lot they're, they're gonna gain out of this. Probably just enough pressure to take this tier one as it looks like that is what they are aiming for. Wangle just sitting in here clearing waves still. Another hook goes a little bit short of Haru here. Gonna be able to clear these wards pretty well as Blue Jay is gonna do some counter jungling of, him, uh, of his own. Take the fives away from Grady as a punishment for dying as well. A little bit of the chess match. Toasty misses the hook again. Just cannot find it, but good lord, Tekken Kid does not miss. Stun is good. Keep an eye on that map. You can see multiple members of D-Lab are rotating for this tower. And Ooh, this is Wingle actually needs to be really careful. good. Wingle's caught. Oh, he got out. Did he flash? He had to have. 
Yeah, but Abby Picker's coming around. Wangler's not out of the woods just yet. Blue Jay and Haru are here. Goes in. Blue Jay does a lot of damage. Just a stasis for both <laughs> members. Blue Jay still alive. Wangler's still alive. And into the Shadow Realm. Grady, where can you go? Can you survive? Can you get out? The answer is no. It's just another bounty for the bounty hunter, the Reaper himself. Revenant's having a great time. That epoch from Wangle was super clutch. Being able to survive that was not something I was expecting. Dodged a lot of the CC with it. He was pretty um, dead, for lack of a, a better vocabulary word. He was pretty dead until that, and then just gets out. What a turnaround by Rogue. They're so comfortably in control of this game at this point. D Lab's really gonna have to turtle up. They're gonna, they're looking to have to get to four or five items in order to be able to win this game. But by that, I don't know if they're gonna be able to get to that point because Haru's gonna be at four by the time that they're at two and a half at this rate. And the the long range ball to stop them from backing to Tekken Kid is absolutely swagging on these people. <laughs> You know, it, it looked really good for D-Lab there because they didn't need to force a fight. And that's why I'm so confused. If D-Lab had just held position and forced Rogue to stick around, they could have easily allowed uh, the, the inhibitor on the right side to go down. Lobber could have easily just shredded it away. Pinzo isn't able to stop him, but instead they committed to the fight and they end up losing that fight they give gold away to rogue they lose their tower and it's just a losing trade they, they didn't even end up taking that inhibitor over there and now right this is a fight they have to take uh they they can't let them get to this third fang tooth that would be very bad for dirty lake and the boys but they do have them in an advantageous position here now blue jay has to hop over second kid in a bad spot is that haru just went down lobber has made the rotation spin to win baby and finally Find a kill on to Haru. Now the damage swings in favor of D Lab. Pushing forward, looking for a little more aggression. Just making sure that Rogue cannot step up to this Fang Tooth. Blue Jay yeah, is still alive. Who is the death mark? No death mark on him. He's, he's going to live that. Okay. But this does give Pinzo the ability to go push the tier one, maybe even the tier two tower over in the duo lane. Unfortunately, it looks like we got Toasty taking a little bit of a, a, a siesta in the base right now. So a member down for D-Lab, which is never what you want to see. However, that's gonna probably end up costing them this third Fang Tooth as his only lobber left to defend here. Probably has the ult, but he's gonna step into the energy gate thing here. He's gonna have to be careful. Gonna oh, jump in, gonna right have to push on over. Off. Up into the ult, look for that regen. Epoch may not be what you want here right now. Wangler now left alone. Well, not completely alone. Here comes the rest of the team. Blue Jay looking to take the kill here, but it might be Wangler who ends up with it still. Either way, Lobber goes down, not able to find any success on that Fang Tooth. What is D Lab doing? Grady is still here as well. Yeah, that is an interesting one, and uh, Appy's going to have to flash away. Pinzo's going to flash in oh and go get him, God. but he's going to get stuck into the fly trap. The, oh, the he's turret damage! He's got it. Oh, he's got it. Oh, he dies. Both of them fall, but what a, you know, what a turnover there by uh, Pinzo to be able to chase him down there. May have been smart to just back away as... I, uh, you know, not having either of them on the map is probably not great as it is two down a piece. But, I mean, it's exciting for us, and I love that from Pinzo. That's what people like Pinzo for, right? That guy's got more fans than an air conditioner store. Oh, wow. That is... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set you outside after that one, Laz. <laughs> you just need to step away from him. Go cool down. Maybe visit the air conditioner. Is there an air conditioner store? I, I don't, don't know. I think um, they come in like a warehouse. Let's take a look at this, though. Look at what Tekken Kid is at sitting at here. Zero, one, and nine. Absolutely massive. We've got the Viper coming in soon from Haru as well. Getting close to finishing that third item. Penzo's getting to the point that he's got pretty much everything he needs. And then, you know, we got Blue Jay down here. 11 kills he's participated in. Been the one who claimed it in six of them. Sitting at two, getting close to finishing that Inferno. He's got the Malady. He's got the Pain Weaver. And, you know, there's just not as much items down here for D Lab. They, they haven't gotten the gold. Yes, they're up about 30 CS as a team, but that's nothing compared to the seven kills. But we are starting to hit that point where the uh, the tank items are going to come on. They're going to be able to start surviving some of this big oh, fly trap is actually coming. Oh, big fly trap hits too, but immediately stopped by Pinzo. He's going to get skewered down, but he's still alive for now. Blue Jay on the flank has found Lakinator under his tower. Double hop right back out. Grady now the target getting locked down. Has to blink away from that one. D-Lab takes a beating. Toasty came in. 
He said, hey, guys, I, I'm back. <laughs> and Roach <laughs> said, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, so now we're going to turn our eyes over to the Orb Prime. That, you know, that's what you get for winning a team fight about 24 minutes into the game. They have a lot of damage. They're going to burn this really, really quick. Not much they can do unless Lobber can get in here and really slow them down. But he is a lowly Greystone all by himself. Actually, he's jumped back into the back bars. line. Okay. Well, Lobber. Cage comes off. Lobber can't go anywhere now. Has to run away. Keep an eye on that map as well. He's got backup coming in for him. Up into the ult. Oh. Lobber's going to go ahead and regen here. What a play by what? Lobber there, getting them off of that or Prime. He oh, didn't want to kill any of them. Didn't need to do anything. Just has to get them off the Prime. Oh my gosh, Pinzo just waiting for them to step around that corner. Toasty and Lobber in the thick of it. Grady being chased down right now. The support is coming. Pinzo somehow still alive, though. He's not able to punch his way out of this one. Grady limps away with a sliver of HP, and D-Lab finally punishes Rogue for overaggression. Right, and that's the second time we've seen Grady get away with just a whiskers worth of hair left in him. Haru's going to walk over a ward here, so they do see him trying to set this flank up. Not a super great place for him to be face checking anyways, although Blue Jay is starting to fight oh there. God! Yep. And that's part of what we were talking about. They've got a bunch of tanks, and then they've got two hyper carries in the late game with Twin Blast and, and the Fae, who are going to be able to blow somebody like Kalari up. I mean, the, the Rogue just cannot be on their own right now. They can't be making these solo plays. So far, they've been playing the fights very well. Rogue steps forward, allows Blue Jay to get into position and find a flank. But these two picks, this opens up the orb prime now for D-Lab. And by God, they're going to take that opportunity. Right, you have to do it, especially with the amount of gold that is in Blue Jay's pockets yeah. out of those 16 kills. He's been a part of so many of them that there's well, not they're, really they're much they can in. do to contest this. No, nah, there's nothing they can do. Or Prime goes the way of D-Lab, and now Tekken has to limp his way on out. Langler looking to try <laughs> to put some damage back, but they need to be very careful. They're getting greedy for Grady right now, and this might be some good damage. Forcing a blink out from Lobber. I'm sorry, just the jump from Lobber. He's still okay for now. And once again, Grady gets out with just a whisker of health. Pinzo's going to go aggro, though. I love to see it. Isn't going to follow it up with a second forward crunch, but they are going to pressure in here onto this tier two tower as the health bars for oh. D-Lab are low. <laughs> there goes Toasty. Second kid, though, has to be very careful. Very low. Could fall at a moment's notice. The dive is good from D-Lab. They're still not able to find a way. Oh, never mind. Epic Picker just drops him down. That's an overstay. And the damage that comes out of a late game Faye, you're starting to see it here. Blue just got to be a little careful here. As he, oh, what? Hey, Blue Jay. Not super sure on that. Probably thought he just had a little bit more of the, um, so the way that it works is as a minion walks into a tower, it debuffs the amount of like armor that a tower it takes. After the minions leave it, there's a little brief period of time where it stays there. It's about a second, maybe a second and a half. It's I don't damage. know for sure, but he probably thought that he had it during it. That armor sets up on it. It cost him another auto attack, but I think it wasn't execute anyways. So not great that you have to spend the death timer here. You're going to give up the primal fang tooth. They're going to get double buffed up, which is not great. I think it was an execute, but I may be just looking for excuses for my friend Blue Jay here to make it oh, it was an you know, execute. not quite as bad, but still a little trolly as that tier two or tier two is still up. There's also a chance that it goes down to minions now and nobody gets local for it. So that's not great either. Yeah, that is tragic, but it is answered back. Toasty f goes down. Haru finds one kill here. Still, uh, you've lost your jungler. You've lost the primal and all you got out of it was the, the enemy support granted you know oh and pinzo is on the end bounty but hang on pinzo over here on the right side trying to push that inhibitor it's not going to get it because d lab is coming back into this game very strongly at this point yeah the lobbers feels like they've thrown away a lot of the lead that they had it does feel as if d lab is starting to get close to being back into this especially when you see you know pinzo puts up all that uh pressure over there on the right lane all it takes is one person to respond to him in Lobber in order to be able to sway that tide and make Pinzo completely retreat, where the opposite is not that that's not the case, where if Lobber's trying to push down the right lane, two people from d yeah. or from Rogue have to go over there and do it, which is just going to free the map up so much for d because of that advantage they have over in the off lane right now. And it doesn't look like Rogue is going to get the job done 
by the time they need to, where the tanks are too much for the Kalari to deal with before Fey or Twin Blast can blow her up. And it's starting to look a little grim for Rogue, but they're definitely not out of it yet. Uh, Revenant is always a problem, no matter how tanky you are. He's probably got a, yeah, so he's got the Demolisher starting to come online soon. Our just finished the part of Viper that gives him the Corrode, so that's great to see. He realizes that he needs that big auto attack that you get out of Demolisher, and Haru is building pretty smart here. See Tekken kids at two items as well. Let's take a look as Lakinator has finished three items, actually, and Haru just finishes Demolisher as we're in this screen. Four items on the Wangler. You see him sitting there at 5 and 6 piloting my girl gadget to a perfection. Interesting to see he doesn't have a Wraith Leggings right now, though. You see the Azercore, the the Caustica, the Oblivion Crown, and the item that I forgot what it was, the Megacosm. I, I, I don't know how you forget about Megacosm on Gadget, but I did for a second. And, you know, they like the damage coming out of him is just nuts. A silent 5 and 6. And that's one of the things that people see and kind of underestimate about Gadget is her early game is a little bit weak, but once you get a couple items on her, if she can get through the early game without dying much, she can take a game over the amount of magic armor shred that is on her ult. All of the different things that it does are just crazy. She just takes a team fight over if you take it in a corridor. And now look at this grouping coming out from D-Lab. Lobber tanking up this tower for his team there. They're gonna go ahead and collect that goal for themselves. All five members just pushing. I think they can see down. This has been a tower sweep for D-Lab, there's nothing standing except for inhibitors on the side of Rogue. This has evened the gold up quite a lot here, Lance. Looking it has, forward. Oh, the long range Gilbert Arenas, but doesn't hit it with the long lacrosse ball. Getting Lava, a little though, aggressive very on low. Blue Jay might be looking to collapse on this. Enzo's being pushed away from the aggression. H does come through. Can they finish it off? No, Lava's Ooh, got the wide. reset off. Braddy pushing everyone away. Blue Jay, though, going all the way through to the back, but locked down and taken down. Blue Jay out of this fight. That gives the numbers advantage over to D-Lab, but they lost Tosi as well. It's a four on four. A rogue not willing to step forward into that tower without these minions. Gonna bring up the wave, get a little bit more gold. Right, so, you know, they're gonna take the second, or, or the, the last tier two tower of the game, only in hip standing for both teams at this spot. Little bit of a numbers advantage coming out for Rogue here as both Grady and Toasty are down. Gonna look to push this in here too, but they're gonna be able to clear these waves so fast, but look at the lockdown, he's oh. gonna have to flash. Whew. He's out of there, but he's taking a beating. Still, Rogue can't stick around for too long. Keep an eye on that Fang Tooth respawn. If they get caught out here, that could be an objective going down, and Blue Jay has a lot more distance to travel than, than anyone on D-Lab does. They definitely do. Probably going to get a reset here as they got, you know, a couple of good uh, shutdowns, a couple of good, uh, you know, spikes within that fight. Going to try to get these gold because it looks like both people had a reset. The Orb Prime is spawning right now. Going to come at it. They do get the Viper finished onto Haru. Got the Tainted Totem onto Deccan Kid as well, so going to reduce some of that healing. Really, really big Tekken or Pinzo's gonna have the Frost Guard, also the Tainted Totem, which is an interesting one in my opinion. You know, but Lobbers at four items now too. Um, Appy Pickers at four with a potent staff as well. So getting close to finishing that O Crown. Uh, Toasty a little bit behind here, but just finished the Unbroken Will, which is gonna make him a lot harder to kill. Got the Hexbound Bracers and the Warden's Faith as well. So. You know, everybody's starting to get to the spot where we said that uh, D-Lab was going to have a big advantage in this game, and we're going to have to see how these team fights play out. Yeah, to me, it feels like Rogue needs to be able to pull some of the aggression from D-Lab a, a little bit more cleanly. We can't have Blue Jay just diving into the back and then suddenly find themselves, oh, well, I guess there's just th three people here, and they're all going to CC me, and they're all going to kill me. That is, that's just not going to end well in these fights. But the question becomes, Lance, how does Rogue continue to approach these fights to find the advantages that they need? Because as you've mentioned, the draft from D-Lab does not allow them to play conventionally. They have to deal with these tanky members, the CC. So where is their break point? I think it would be interesting to see maybe a second sweeper come out from rogue they got to get kalari into spots where they know that they're not being seen by the by the wards i know she's got the thing that tells you herself if she's being seen by a ward but they don't want you can't kill the ward at that spot so yeah. maybe maybe you put like haru maybe pinzo onto a sweeper as well find paths for blue jay to get in 
and get onto one of the squishy high priority targets right away. Because if he, Blue Jay can get into the back line undetected, get on to Appy Picker, get on to Lakeinator, kill them in one shot, they've got a really good chance at winning the rest of that fight. They'll trade Blue Jay for half of the damage that D Lab has basically. But right. it's also really tough. We saw in the community art spotlight that like Prince Charming, Omega Chad, Greystone, that's Lobber in this game because <laughs> he, he's kind of been an unstoppable force, a brick wall for them to have to get through, being able to just dive back lines himself and they're gonna start up or prime. And this is where the big question was, which objective gets looked at first? Lab, just putting some good damage into it, but keep an eye on your map. Rogue should be on their way. Everyone's coming in from mid. It's a race. Pinzo looking to pinch them off here, and here comes the swarm. Good Goes steel down. Wall. It's on the side of D Lab. But how about the fight after it? Toasty, very low, but Lobber up in the fight. Skewer goes wide. Doesn't find the value they're looking for. Now, Happy Picker is the target. Grady comes crashing down, disrupting, keeping his bay alive. And Pinzo has nothing to say about it. Haru is the target. Lobber is the hammer. And he breaks the Revenant down. This one all goes the sway of D Lab. Three for one. Right, and here's the outscale we were talking about all of the way back in Champion Select. Not to harp on it continuously, but it's just what we are seeing. They picked an early game comp, didn't necessarily get... I, I'm not a total early game comp, just the Kalari makes you think that it is. A lot of their champions actually scale fairly well, but a lot of the utility in Decker is there the entirety the of the Decker game. A, lo a lot of the utility of the Crunch is there the entire game. It's really only Revenant and um, Gadget that are good late game champions over here for Rogue. And you see that Dirty Lake and the boys, they're just stuffed full of tanks at this spot. It's so hard to get through all of the CC they have. Grady had a great wall to, to keep um, Rogue out of being able to jump into that pit. And now they're gonna have their eyes set on the Primal Fangtooth. And this is such a big swing of objectives. If D-Lab is able to secure both of these, I mean, how, how does Rogue even fight into them at that point? You're standing I, on your inhibitors with very few options available to you. There's no retreat from there. This has to be the fight. Here they come to try to steal us. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, he does drop the Tesla Dome over the wall. You can do that with that. However, it's a little tough. This. Lobber's going to have to get the ult forced out of him. But Blue Jay's in a... They, they, maybe they don't see him. He's in a bad spot there. He's got to get himself He's out. Alive. <laughs> okay. He's alive. He's clear. Everyone survives. <laughs> that's really important. If anybody falls there, that's probably the end of the game. I mean, this, this feels like it could still very well be the end of the game. It does still leave a defense potential open for Rogue, but it's a hard one. You're facing Orc Prime. You're facing the Primal. You've got an, a mid inhibitor down, so you've got to deal with the enhanced minions as well. And everybody gets, go? everybody gets a reset here as well, but D-Lab gets a much better reset after getting both of those... Oh, yeah both of those neutral objectives a whole lot of gold in their pockets we see lobbers at full build he's not getting any stronger appy picker at full build not getting any stronger both at level 18 as well and d lab is exactly where they wanted to be in order to be able to win this game wangle still looking incredibly strong at 508 340 cs just just a bit shy of that 10 cs per minute mark he's at full build as well pretty much everybody on both sides getting close to that five item spot everybody's got at least four we see Lobber pushing the right lane here. We got to move over to the other side for the rest of Dirty Lake and the boys on the left as well. They're going to try to take both down at the same time as they have the super minions pushing in the mid. And this is exactly the macro play you would want to see if you were a Dirty Lake and the boys fan. Uh, look where Blue Jay is on the map, all the way in mid. Not healthy at all right now. He's going to have to force a back here. He can't look for a flank. And Rogue knows it. They know they cannot contest at this inhibitor. They're going to let the left go down just stalling on the right side. That's gonna be quick to follow as well. Buying time for Blue Jay to get back, get healthy. Rogue is currently banking on a five-man defense around their core, possibly around this inhibitor. Have to be wary of these minions pushing up. Lance, there's so much pressure right now. Yeah, and I, I don't necessarily know what the objective of putting Blue Jay into the mid lane there and having to push all the way up to the river. Maybe you just clear one or two waves to stop the like immediate pressure of that, but that inhib's already gone. Let the let the minions kind of pour in with them as you have to be able to be back there to try to save one of those two inhibs as they end up losing both of them. So a completely exposed core for Rogue. That's not what you would have expected if you would have only turned in and watched the first 10, 15 minutes of this game, but yeah. it's the way that it's turning, and it's 
it's a little detriment. It, it's a little tough if you were a rogue fan to find a way that you're going to be able to win these team fights as they don't have a great ability to like really pick anybody off with the way that D Lab is running around the map together, the way that they are balling up. There's just not a whole lot of options for rogue to find what they need in order to start a fight. Yeah, and it's like we mentioned on the desk as well. These are sister organizations, right? These two teams know each other. They are, all these players know how everyone plays on this map and how they function as a team. They've scrimmed against each other. They played against each other. And you're starting to see some of that. D-Lab knows where Blue Jay is going to be looking in these fights, and they're preparing for it. They understand where his mind is, where his gameplay is, and they're just shutting it out right now. Rogue is trying. They're doing their best. You see constantly great dives onto these back lines, but the tanks, the CC, is just too much. And D-Lab is consistently pushing them back, not allowing them any breathing room. And with all inhibitors down, or prime, that, that just goes the way of D-Lab now. Right, and it looks like they're gonna set up the one for one as you know, all of the lanes are gonna start pushing towards them. It's gonna take more than one member to stop Lopper here as we see Pinzo and Tekken both coming over to try to deal with the Gravestone. Blue Jay's there taking his blue buff in between the two lanes that are being pressured as well. <laughs> but you see all of the members of D-Lab getting together around this mid side. The Orb Prime is about to uh, spawn as well, and there's really no route in for Rogue in order to be able to contest this, especially with Lobber still over there in the left lane. They cannot just ignore him, and I think he kills Pinzo in a 1v1, so they gotta be careful about this. You got a collapse happening in this mid lane here. Haru being uh -oh. looked at, Grady charging in. Oh, he comes that out was just so to close. block off the approach. Keeps Haru alive, keeps all of Rogue alive. Keeps the, the dream of defense alive and well for now as well. And I'm Blue Jay, careful in that jungle. Don't want to get caught out here. These are some long death timers at this point. Oh, oh Toasty doesn't hit it. Whew. Yeah, and you know, the, the members of Rogue do have to be walking through wards here. You see them hey, doing a little bit of sweeping to get them Haru? out here. Just some uh oh Haru's left out on his lane. Haru's left out on his own here, but there's not a whole lot of ways for them to be able to jump onto him as it looks like D-Lab is just going to once again start that objective. Not afraid to say, hey, try to walk in on us. We know we're stronger than you at this point. We're just going to take this objective and force you to come try to stop us. And Rogue knows that they can't as they're going to actually just trade it for the Primal Fangtooth. They're going to move over to the other side of the map. Yeah, mid inhibitor is up as well. So that's a respawn. They're going to burn stop some of the minion push, but Lobber. Now on his way over to this Primal Tesla Dome, gets dropped, trying to secure it. And it does confirm the Primal Fangtooth for Rogue. They've got that going for them. Primal against Orb Prime. Only one way to find out how that one goes. Lobber currently on the chase, and here comes Braddy all the way from the side. Surprise, it's a flank, and you've left yourself alone. There's nowhere for Pinzo to go. He is indeed, no way oh, he gets out of this one. No. Yeah, he gets gunned oh. down. Lakinator pulls out the Gatling guns, and now, now it's a 5v4. So there's minions on the core, too. Lab. So they do have the ability to fight these off a little bit better than they would before. They've got the burn from the Primal Fang Tooth here, but that's just going to be D-Lab sweeping these inhibitors down once more as they're not even shooting at them. Rogue is in a bunch of trouble. There's a lot of pressure coming in there. They got the Orb Prime um, this is a push. pushing against them They're as well. They want to end gonna this. going to put the wall up. And Jay, just like that, they're on the core. And they cannot stop him. Blue Jay has to get in there to try to stop him. Grady getting melted. He goes down. Two down. Lobber still on it. And that is enough. D-Lab pull it back from a very rough early game. Issue, it's not the first 10 minutes that matter. It's the rest of the game after that they pull through. Yeah, and I mean, that's really good team mental out of D-Lab. Yeah. They knew they got behind early. They knew what the goal was. They know they're playing for late game. They know that if it goes long enough, we're going to win this. And the ability to be able to sit back, be down, what was it, seven, eight, nine to one kills at a certain point in this game. Haru's 2-0 and 3 in the duo lane, and it just looks like Tekken can't miss a lacrosse ball knowing sit back, we've got this late, we're going to be able to scale to the spot that there's nothing they're going to be able to do about it, be able to maintain that composure, not start yelling at each other, calling each other names, tilting within the game. Oh, we're not supposed excellent, to do that? Excellent, excellent performance out of D-Lab. They will earn our third seed. Rogue will be our fourth seed. 
which is a really important thing, actually, because the third seed is going to be on the second side or the second seed side of the bracket where the fourth has to go up against whoever wins our next game yeah. between even worse timing and rest and relaxation. Honestly, I wouldn't want to play either of them. I especially wouldn't want to play the one that wins, though. Yeah, and this was honestly a very close game throughout. And my big focus on that was constantly on the dual lane because if you looked, if you keep it, I kept an eye on things. Haru should have been very far ahead in gold, but Lakinator was constantly on par in his build. That's because he was getting so much more farm. I think he ended up 50 or 60 farm ahead of Haru, and that was a consistent trend throughout the game. There was never a point where he was actually unable to impact a fight. Excellent play from Lakinator. Excellent play from D-Lab as a whole. They are a team-oriented team. They focus on those team fights, waited to scale, Play it phenomenally. One of my favorite little like running pun things within the game is I call Lakeinator a size of body of water based on his performance. And at the beginning of that game, he was looking like Puddle Nader, ended up looking like Oceanator. And that's the that's that's the Lakeinator that I love seeing. Uh, that is going to be it for the third and fourth place matchup. That's going to be it for Spooky for the day. Thank you for joining us, Spooky. We're going to kick it back to our desk before the final game of the day. Thank you so much to our dashing casters, Lance and Spooky Mars. What a phenomenal game to watch. You know, we talked about this, how these two teams are both so familiar with each other, but what a mastery of the game and a spectacular performance from both of them. This game just really had me on the edge of my seat. Even though both these teams have been working together, screaming together for a while now, at the end of the day, D-Lab coming out on top for this best of one for the third and fourth seed. Uh, so Cynic, can you tell us about what we just witnessed? Uh, I mean, we witnessed a pretty strong early game, especially from Blue Jay and Tekken. Uh, if you looked at the minimap, there was a lot of vision issues in the fact that like Blue Jay was pathing around the traditional um, warding placements to allow him to get behind the dual lane to uh, impact that lane. But as we saw in the off lane, it wasn't going so well for them. So they were falling behind in the off lane and then they weren't snowballing. Once the support got this crest, uh, upgrade mm -hmm. and got his wards. There was a, not a lot of playmaking that Blue Jay could have done. Uh, as you could see, the wards were just all over that duo lane, and there was no point in him being in the off lane because his yeah the, the off lane was kind of lost at that point. And if he went over there, he would have just been feeding more gold. And they're not really going to be killing a gray stone, especially when the crunch is behind. So the mid game happened. They didn't snowball hard enough. They came back and they played the objectives they played around their team comp and they just won from there the kalari was unable to impact the back line because of the way they were death balling and positioning in the pits and the revenant wasn't able to 1v1 the uh, either of the carries so he kind of was just shooting at tanks as you can see in most team fights the Re the richter was always the first one to die but they had to expend so much to get rid of him and then by that time everyone else is dead or running away Right, and we kind of talked about this during the draft itself, about how Rogue had to end this game fast. You know, they had that risky pick on the cheesy Kalari, but what went right um, for, and what went wrong for Rogue, Cynic? Well, they got the Kalari ahead. Um, they played around that very well. Tekken uh, was doing his best. He honestly was doing very well. Um, but, uh, as I said, like they got, they did, they, the win conditions were met but they just weren't able to break that tier one in duo. And obviously they fell behind in farm and the, the gold lead that they looked like they had fell off completely. As soon as um, they hit key item spikes, the Kalari was just irrelevant at that point. And it's very hard for Blue Jay to really do anything, which is no fault of his own. He played the early game well. It's just they didn't snowball as a team through the mid and, uh, and, and end it quickly. Yeah, and unfortunately, D-Lab took advantage of that and they were just able to scale. But Mr. Meds, what were the peak points of this match and what stood out for you? Yeah, so I think one of the, the biggest points in the match and one of the, I would say, almost like the turning point in the match was that one play where Appy Picker and Lobber kind of teamed up to take down that tier one and then subsequently the tier two tower. Um, you know, I think that while it might be kind of a smaller play in the grand scheme of things outside of like the, you know, the big team fights that we saw, I think it's a really great macro play um, for D-Lab. 
you know, taking down that tier one and tier two tower actually allows D Lab to get really good vision into uh, Rogue's red side, which then allows them to be more aggressive uh, surrounding the, the Orb Prime Pit. Um, you know, we did see a lot of big fights surrounding that Orb Prime Pit. Um, you know, we, just, we saw Grady uh, do a lot of damage, but all of that was set up by the vision and knowing where that Kalari was during those team fights. Yep, and that's exactly how you counter that Kalari is just, you know, making sure that you you have the vision where you need it to be. But both of these teams know the game in and out. They know each other in and out. But GG's to Rogue and congrats again to D-Lab. All right, gamers, don't go anywhere. And uh, while you're here, if you aren't already, please give us a follow, subscribe, join the Discord, sub to us on YouTube, and follow us on Zitter. Apparently, we're currently at 62 subs on Twitch, so seven more for the magic number. Uh, but we're going to go ahead for a quick break. But next up is our last game for the first and second place seed. Last game. EWT versus R&R. &R.